You're listening to the Jack and Chill Podcast. All right. All right, Jack. Today we are going to be talking about Thanksgiving, which our listeners may or may not know is a family holiday celebrated here in the U.S. It traditionally was supposed to commemorate sharing between the pilgrims and Native Americans. Of course, we know that that's not historically accurate at all. Right. Or it's Uh, a very oversimplified description of the situation. Yeah. Of the situation. But um, today it's kind of divorced from its original meaning mostly. And it's kind of just a family holiday where you eat food together. Right. Um, So... Yeah, I want to ask you, our our viewers may or may not know, there's some typical things you usually eat during Thanksgiving. I would say turkey, yep. stuffing, cranberry mashed, sauce, mashed potatoes, mashed potatoes yeah. gravy. Um, I think those are the ones that, like, you basically can't skip. Right. Um, And then if each the- family has... Sorry, go ahead. No, I was going to say that's exactly right. If there's no stuffing, then it doesn't really, it's like, that's one really important component of like turkey, mashed potatoes, stuffing, and cranberry sauce. Like you have right. to have Cranberry it. sauce, yeah. gravy, got to have that. And then most people have something green, like a green beans or a salad or some kind of green side, but I right. would feel those are like the staples. And then each family has things that pretty much just their family makes. Right. Oh, sweet potato casserole or sweet potatoes in some preparation is another big popular food. Yeah. And then I would say for the ones that my family makes, it's kush, which is like a cornbread dish with hard boiled eggs and green onion And then um, oysters, which is like oysters, literally strained canned oysters in a casserole dish with like a breadcrumb topping. It's really good. Both of them sound weird, but they're both really delicious. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, we our our weird one was lefsa because we're Scandinavian, right? My my family. Oh, uh so uh, lefsa is like a a potato pancake. With just it just uh-huh. literally has butter on it and then sugar, and then you roll that it, roll it up. Yeah, I mean it's it's uh, it's full on like causes diabetes. You know what I mean? Like right. you could trace it right <laughs> back to to that, but but it's so good. It tastes so good. All right. So my oh, and my thing is ever since I started making the. Um, Thanksgiving spread pretty much on my own. I've started doing this since I was about 24. Mm -hmm. Um, Every year, I pretty much make the whole spread on my own. This year, my mom made the oysters, which were probably the best thing, actually. Mm -hmm. And besides that, I pretty much made everything else myself. Um, And ever since I started making the spread myself, I only make fried chicken instead of turkey. Okay. Wow. All right. A substitution. A different yes. bird. Yeah. 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 I just, turkey is like a lot for a kind of smaller family gathering. Mm-hmm. I don't like the flavor as much. And then for like one person cooking most of the main dishes, it's really hard for like one person to prepare the turkey on their own pretty much. Yeah. Um, and it's just and so- everyone likes fried chicken. I mean, you can't. Oh, yeah. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Um, can't go wrong. For, How about for- you? Do you? Sorry, I prefer the turkey. Like I'm a I'm a purist. Okay, so you're a freaking purist. Wow, yeah. betrayed. I'm a I'm, I'm a kidding. Thanksgiving purist. Like I I need my my turkey. Um, I I I and I'm I'm the worst. Like I'm I'm such a typical American that I like the breast, like that you know the white meat. No, to, which is you like betrayed. everyone knows it has the least flavor. And the and it's the driest part of the of the bird. That's but I just, it's just like a tradition. Like I when I was a kid, you know, we were picky. We I didn't want the dark meat. I wanted only the, you know, pure the muscle part, you know, just the the whitest of the white meat and a big old slice of it, you know, a heaping slice of 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 dry as a bone white white meat turkey yeah turkey breast 
Yeah. See, I'm the opposite. Even as a kid, I always liked dark meat. So I'd always want the turkey leg. Right. And now that I can make it on myself, I'm like, why would I even make turkey when there's better proteins out there like fried chicken <laughs> yeah. I just, and then you can, it's so easy to make gravy with the fried chicken yeah like so that's just it's just knocks out two birds with one stone haha pun intended yeah, yeah. <laughs> and yeah so to me so so you're on the opposite end of this okay mm-hmm. other unpopular thanksgiving opinion i did not know i was on the unpopular end of this one yeah I prefer homemade cranberry sauce to canned. I won't even eat the canned stuff. It's nasty. No, no, no. no. How about you? I'm a, again. I'm a purist. I it has to come out of a can. It has to make the like plopping sound. You know where you like it kind of like, you know, and falls on the plate. <laughs> like if it doesn't yeah. make that kind of weird sound when it comes out of the can, as it slides out of the can, um, I'm not eating it. Um, I oh mean, I'll eat God. it. Of course, I would eat it. I'm, I'm not. I'm not rude, but but I prefer that kind of jellied cranberry sauce uh, from the can. And uh, I don't know. For me, it's like the perfect combination to the kind of salty, savory gravy and mashed potatoes. And then you get that super sweet, almost like a gel gelatin kind of uh, cranberry sauce oh my you know? god i know it's really crazy oh, right yeah. i lost so much respect for you <laughs> I, I cannot my dad always made it from scratch and i started making it from scratch it's so easy um you just open a couple bags of cranberries with a little bit of water boil it in a pot with some sugar yeah. and i like to add in a little bit of i squeeze half an orange in there at the end Oh, a little and citrus, a little little a little zest to it or something, a little Yeah, a little citrus zest and yeah. um it is pretty sweet. I try to add enough sugar so that it's not too sour. Yeah. I try to make it sweet. Um of course cranberries themselves kind of have a naturally bitter sour flavor. Like right. they're also bitter, you know. But I I just prefer that so much. I I honestly I the canned stuff makes me gag. I hate the texture. I love like that cold. texture. It's like jelly oh, or jello oh. or something, gelatin. I know. It's it's yeah. so gross too. Oh, oh my yeah. god, no. I can't. I, I the other go ahead. Well, go I'm ahead. I'm just trying to think like why do I like it? Do I like it because it makes me it's cuz of sentimentality or is it because I actually like the taste? And I think it might be a combination of both. It's like that's what we had when I was growing up. So that's what I want when I have a Thanksgiving dinner. Um, but I wouldn't, you know, right. I would it's not like, be disappointed if someone brought in like a homemade cranberry sauce made from scratch. I mean, I'm not, I'm not an insane person. Like I would definitely enjoy that and appreciate it. I just, I'm totally satisfied with the can, I guess. that, And like, look, here's the thing about the can. It's like, it's probably 95% sugar you know, 5% cranberry, you know what I mean? Like it's probably just a sugar bomb and that's why it's so sweet, you know, like yours is a much healthier version of it, you know, and it's probably got a numerous chemicals in there too, to preserve it, you know, because to make it that texture. Yeah. Well, the texture that does not exist in nature at all. (laughs) It's horrible. God congealed. Oh no, I just can't. I can't cranberry juice <laughs> Ooh, yeah oh my god no the <laughs> other one i want to ask you jack is pumpkin pie is it overrated and do you prefer another dessert i didn't make a dessert this year i had too many other things to do i personally just i don't i didn't want to make pumpkin pie i was gonna use leftover cranberry sauce with apples to make like a cranberry apple crumble right and i also uh, I'm thinking I have some cans for like canned pumpkin pie and I was going to make into like a pumpkin pudding with like layers. You know how people make banana pudding Yeah. with the layers of cookies? Yeah. I think I'm going to make a pumpkin pudding, pudding with that. But I just personally don't like pumpkin pie. I feel like right. the texture is textures always kind of off. It tastes kind of like tofu or something. <laughs> and it's like yes. it's not sweet enough. It's just not it's not my cup of tea. How do you feel about it? <laughs> I love pumpkin pie. 
<laughs> we're on opposite we're on opposite spectrums today we're we're having two completely different meals right now um <laughs> yes yeah i mine is better so mine is a better meal when i was a kid i didn't like pumpkin pie because i was just like it's like a it was a vegetable i mean it's like a vegetable pie you know like it, it just seemed sweet. odd to me because i when I think of pie, I think of fruit pies, right? Or pecan right. pie, something like that with, with nuts. Pecan, yeah. Um, so my mom would always make a pecan pie and a and a pumpkin pie, or my grandmother would make an apple pie. And I would always choose the apple pie, obviously, because I mean apple pie is clearly the winner. I but, actually don't like apple pie. The texture is nasty to me. It's like hot apples. No, thanks. Oh, yeah. No, I like that, too. Yeah, that's that's funny because. Uh, wow. It is like I want to yeah. know at the end of this, uh, all our listeners pause right now and write a comment down below. Whose house would you rather eat at? Mine or Jack's? <laughs> Mine is the right answer. I'll let you guys know yeah. right now. <laughs> well, if you want if you want the authentic 1985 American Thanksgiving, you come to my house. But uh Oh my God! Social's a you know younger, and you guys are you know, you've been watching <laughs> Top Chef for your whole life, you know. So you know, you guys so are like, I'm gonna make a an apple cranberry crumble, you know, with a. With <laughs> oh my God! A, a you got citrus, me. Uh, you got me. Yeah. No, yeah. <laughs> but I, but I, I appreciate. I respect it. I I do. I mean, I know that yours culinary yours is a, a culinary delight. And mine is like a just a traditional kind of uh, gruel, like a you know a meal that uh, yeah, you know. Well, you have like big Midwestern energy. I do. It's like, I I'm, it's the big root like white. If you want to like white middle class Midwestern meal, it's like Jack's house is the where it's at. Oh my gosh, we are we we are the epitome of the right white middle class uh, Midwestern. You know. Um, we're big farmers and we like our big birds, you know, like a big turkey and a giant mountain of mashed potatoes with like, you know, a lava flow of gravy, you know, coming In down that mountain of mashed potatoes with a big old plop of cranberry sauce. And um, I'm trying to think like what my, my mother used to make um, this one, you'll know, like this is a, a traditional one. Um, a sweet potato casserole with um, marshmallow yeah. melted on the top. Yes. So, so my mom and my grandma on my dad's side both make this. And I, I, well, my grandma actually has started making it a little differently. She doesn't put the marshmallows on it anymore. But I personally think my sweet potatoes are the best. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm kind of arrogant because I definitely think I'm the best cook in the family. My My grandma actually on my dad's side has some really great recipes. I'm like, I'm going to hang out with her on Christmas and I'm definitely going to collect a bunch of recipes because she has some good ones. Yeah. Um, but for me, I like to make candied yams instead of the sweet potato casserole. Okay. Yeah. That, and that's I cool. put like cinnamon and cardamom in it and it's really good. I, yeah. I really enjoy it. That yeah. I would, I would really enjoy that. Um, you know, I, I live in Korea now where this, I've never done this before until I lived in Korea. I just eat, ate, or I like to eat um just a plain sweet potato i just put it in yeah. the oven bake it and i don't add any sugar i add nothing and i even eat the skin of it and it's just got lots of fiber and nutrients and you know it's high in carbohydrates but um yeah that's popular in mexico too there's a camotero which is like a guy that sells sweet potatoes and he goes by and you can hear his sweet potato cart whistling and he oh, goes, come on this, come on this. And he's like calling out sweet potato, sweet potato <laughs> in that voice, in that like annoying, like, come on this. <laughs> sounds yeah, like that. Yeah. And people come running out of their houses to go grab a sweet potato. To get a sweet a potato. Roasted sweet potato. Yeah. I, really I love them. I think it's great. I mean, you know, it made me think like, why do we dress up the sweet potato? You know, like right. with, with melted you know marshmallows on top Butter, it's like putting sugar it's on sweet. sugar you know what i mean like it, yeah it doesn't it's sweet need... yeah i think my theory about why we do that in the u.s is that our our viewers who have never been to the u.s might not know this or our listeners but um i think the produce is a lot less flavorful in the u.s which is crazy because the u.s has optimal growing conditions but because of how our 
food supply chain works, we pick most things before they're fully ripe mm-hmm. and treat them with a bunch of chemicals. So they'll last, uh, they'll have a really long shelf life. Right. And so because of this, most things that you're buying, like don't have the sweet, the natural sweetness that they would in other countries. Like in Mexico, if you're going to eat a pineapple or a strawberry or something, it tastes really sweet. And in Korea as well, if you have strawberries, they're like really sweet and delicious and succulent. Yep. And in the U.S., you're going to get this giant strawberry the size of my fist. Right. But it tastes <laughs> like a complete. glass of water. You know, it's flavorless. It's like it's yeah. just like chewing on a glass of fibrous water. It's nasty. Right. Right. It looks beautiful, like a a picturesque strawberry from a commercial yeah. but it, it tastes like a like you said a fibrous glass of water like it's just got yeah nothing. it's nasty yeah yeah That's anyway i guess those are our unpopular food but we have to tell me first before we before we transition to the next one what do you like about pumpkin pie because i think i used to I used to pretend to like it as a kid because I felt like I was supposed to like it. And I really didn't because it's kind of bland and texturally it it tastes like whipped tofu. And I like pumpkin can in Mexico. We have like candied pumpkin. You cut it into slices and you stew it with a bunch of like brown sugar and spices. Mm -hmm. And then you just eat, eat it like that. And it tastes really good. Because actually the flavor penetrates it fully, but with pumpkin right. pie, it's like hard to whip it into pie form and have the flavor fully. It's not like yeah. it's like not sweet. If enough. you're making it from scratch, you know, like like there there you could make it like you can just buy the already whipped up pumpkin. I don't know what you call it, like the filling part, right? You can buy. Yeah, it but I'm sure that's how you guys made it back home, right? Because. I'm sure. Well, my my dad actually made it from scratch sometimes, and I, that was even worse. It tasted like <laughs> more like stringy tofu. <laughs> yeah, it is like, it even worse. It was like stringy pumpkin. Oh no, I just ugh. don't don't use leftover uh, jack o' lantern. Uh, that my dad did that. My dad would literally do that. Would use like leftover jack o' lantern. He would like freeze it or something, and then just like make a pumpkin pie with it later. It was like stringy. Ugh, God. Yeah, that's so. Rough. What do you? Yeah. yeah. What do you like about pumpkin pie, though? Because I feel like you like when you buy it in a can form or you buy it pre-made from a store, that's like the best version. And right. it's still not good. Because me. it's it's loaded with sugar. Um, yeah. I think all of these things are are just completely loaded with sugar. So I, I like uh, pumpkin pie because, well, actually, I didn't start liking it until I was an adult. It's kind of like oh. one of those things that I grew into. So. Mm-hmm. I started with, you know, eating just apple pie or pecan pie when I was a kid. And then as an adult, I'm like, I'm going to try a slice of pumpkin pie. I like it with whipped cream on top, which is kind of cheating, right? It's like, yeah. I, what do I My like more? Do I like the, the pumpkin or do I like the whipped cream? But if you get, if you get a, a, if you get whipped cream and pumpkin pie together in one on the spoon, then mm-hmm. it's tolerable. But mm-hmm. like, I think you're right. I think pumpkin pie is like at its best is just tolerable. Like it's like it's mid, not, you know, yeah. slang in mid, like it's just in the like mid range. Like it's not amazing. It's not horrible. It's just mid. Like the best pumpkin pie is mid. Right. To me. right. The best pumpkin pie is 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 not better than not the great. worst blueberry pie. You know, yes. Oh, my God. Blueberry yeah. pie is my favorite. I like to make that for Christmas, though. Yeah. But yeah, I was going to that was. Yeah. Gonna be my other question to you is like, do you eat it loaded with with, with whipped cream, which you said you do? Because oh, yeah. my sister, that's how she eats it. She just she's like eating whipped cream pie with some pumpkin on it, basically. Yeah, and I'm just like, at that point, you do you just like to have an excuse to eat a ton of whipped cream that has like a slight pumpkin flavoring? <laughs> you know, I I actually I do enjoy it. Like I like when you when you when you get like. Like I said, like a like a spoon of whipped cream and a, a a bit of pumpkin filling, and then some of that nice breaded crust. Yeah, it, all in one the bite. Is it is a very nice. Like I do like it. I do. It's like I'll 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 really enjoy a Costco pumpkin pie with my wife. Like we'll get the mm-hmm. the whipped cream and we'll buy the pumpkin pie, and I'll have a slice. You know, every night until it's gone. You know. Um, right. But 
you're right. Like, I mean, if I were, to, you know, of all the pastries that you could choose in the world, why why do we choose pumpkin pie? I think, again, it's it goes back to like sentimentality. It kind of reminds me of home. It like makes me feel like I'm back in America eating yeah. a Thanksgiving dessert. So it's more like a nostalgic eat yeah. than like a, oh, this is the taste is wonderful. Like, I just love the taste. Which is kind of stupid. I mean, it's it's a weird thing to eat for nostalgia purposes. Then but it's to- such a specific flavor. It's like, of course, that it would bring up a nostalgic thing. Because yeah. if you're eating like a hot dog, I mean, you can get that anywhere, kind of. But like, right. or, you know, mac and cheese. But it's just brings back a certain holiday memory to have the pumpkin pie. I think that's what I it is. I mean, it's like it's like eating a a childhood memory. Like, but it's a, yes. but the funny thing is, I never started eating pumpkin pie till I was um, an adult. An adult. <laughs> so yeah, it's just like, but the smell and and I don't know. I I probably had the a memory, few slices. Yeah, when you're eating it, it just reminds you of Thanksgiving, right? Which is a nostalgic memory for us in the U.S. Yeah. Yeah, I've only had I've only had maybe two thanksgiving meals in the last 24 years probably Mm -hmm. um i remember i had a neighbor from america and he invited me over on thanksgiving and he was trying to make a thanksgiving meal um in korea and he was an Uh american guy he worked on the military base so he got a bird uh sorry we bird is slang for turkey for turkey Um, yeah, that's how Midwest am I right now? Um, he, so he got a turkey got a bird. and uh, he got a bird and made mashed potatoes and stuff. And we, but it was really awkward. Like, I didn't really want to be there. <laughs> I was just like, oh, I, no, wait, why was it awkward? Because this I wasn't really to close next- to him that much. I think he was trying um, to like reach out. And, uh, and I was just kind of like, um, you know, my wife's not here. She was at work and I'm just sitting there at this like guy's house eating uh, Thanksgiving food. But, we're, we're, we're both were you with anyone else no it was just like me and him and like his kid i think was there maybe his wife that's really remember. awkward yeah it was really awkward and i was just like yeah i, I was we were, we were both just trying to to recreate our own childhood memory you know to go back to our past and try to create something over here and i i realized that it's just not you can't do it like it doesn't work. You have to you need it. You need a group of people that are all really gung ho, like excited about about trying yeah. to recreate a Thanksgiving. So what you need is like a lot of foreigners, you know, and right. so when you get a lot of foreigners together, they'll they'll put together a big old, like you said, a spread, like a spread is right. like a, a lot of a lot of different foods and you can do a big Thanksgiving uh, feast. But when it's just like me, I tried to do that with my daughter, and my wife, but it was just, it's, it's just too difficult. So I just yeah. said, you know what, we'll, we'll celebrate the Korean harvest festival, which is the Chuseok holiday. And I'll just, you know, forget about the Thanksgiving one, but hopefully someday in the future, before I die, I would love to go back and have like a proper Thanksgiving dinner in america yeah. that would be that's one of my dreams no matter where i am i always make the thanksgiving so i wasn't in korea for that thanksgiving but i was in mexico and i did make the spread but it was just me doing it by myself and one of my friends who came like insulted my food i really wanted to kick her out at that point i was like don't insult like it just made me so mad because i worked so hard to make everything that's and, awful um, yeah it was really mean does she doesn't understand Thanksgiving or she's she's not uh, American? She doesn't or? know. She's not American, but I okay. don't I don't know. It was just it was weird. But I think later she felt bad about it. But I was like, I was mad. I was like, OK, well, you don't have to eat. <laughs> <laughs> you just pulled them off. It was just like, uh, well, then, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. No dessert <laughs> for you. No room. pumpkin pie. No pumpkin crumble. Crumble cake for you. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing that I did mess up, and this was before she even got to that part, so this is not what she was criticizing. I undercooked the chicken. <laughs> oh my god, it was so funny because I didn't realize that the elevation makes cooking time for meat and everything different. Oh, 
I didn't know that. Yeah, either. I didn't know. Yeah, yeah, I didn't know that. And so the chicken was like undercooked, but it still went well, I think. Yeah. Um, because the sides were all really delicious, even though the, the chicken was undercooked. And my boyfriend came the next day, and he, we had leftovers together, and he really liked the food. And I reheated the chicken so it cooked all the way through. <laughs> so yeah, it was like, yeah, you don't want to give anyone enjoy. raw chicken. Well, the yeah, thing I that I think cool. we're forgetting about Thanksgiving is the leftovers, because yeah. there's nothing like a the the turkey sandwich, you know, the turkey gravy sandwich the next uh-huh. day. So you take a piece of bread and you heat up the uh, you he- you heat up the turkey and you heat up the uh, the gravy and then you put the turkey on the bread and then you do pour gravy on it and it soaks into the bread. And then you eat mm. that turkey sandwich with the the bread, you know, soaked the gravy soaked bread. And that mm. is even better than Thanksgiving, in my opinion. Right. Yeah. Yeah. See, the, I've never eaten leftovers like that. I hear a lot of Americans eat like the turkey sandwich and stuff. For us, we would just reheat everything and eat it again. Yeah. Um, but it's so good because sometimes flavors like have a chance to meld more together in a dish within a dish like they just get better and better yeah yeah it's like more flavorful so yeah i i really like the leftovers and i think it's the best part is like you can eat that food for like three days and you don't even have to worry about making new food one thing i like to do is just like add on so since i do everything by myself now i do things in shifts so like the first round was like fried chicken mashed potatoes stuffing oysters green beans, cranberry sauce. And the second shift was like sweet potatoes, kush. Like just, I made different dishes each so we could just like bring them together. Right. No, it's uh, it's the best. I mean, I, it, I know a lot of people like my friend, Kevin, you, you know, Kevin, um, his favorite holiday is Thanksgiving by far. Like he likes it more than Christmas. He likes it more than any other holiday. Um, I think it's because of that, like eating and drinking together. And uh, I don't know, it, it puts you in a like, you know, it's supposed to be a time where you reflect on the year and you're thankful for the things that you have, you know, and I think we forget about that because I because the very next day after Thanksgiving is probably the 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 lowest point culturally for us, which is the Black Friday where oh it's yeah. all about consumerism and excess and you know um it's about fist fighting over a, te- a television that's on you know sale or you know i mean it's like so it's funny how we we flip flop from like this really thankful kind of thoughtful mode to the kind of aggressive shopping mode of black friday and so i I think people forget, you know, I, I don't know. That's so I, I love Thanksgiving because I, I love the food and I love the family. And um, yeah, it was it it is a, a wonderful holiday. I do. I do love it. We are kind of forgetting about the other side of the coin, though, which is like Thanksgiving family drama, which I feel like always comes out. Right. Um, during those times i saw this really funny meme that's like remember to bring up politics during thanksgiving so you can save on christmas presents <laughs> <laughs> yeah and like that was me i've i think i've had drama every year probably my family's a little bit dramatic this year i got mad because i actually get mad most years so that's not new <laughs> this year you cook i got the mad food and then you I, storm off right yeah, I like made all the food and then um today I guess it wasn't Thanksgiving anymore. But I think we had a fine Thanksgiving, but then it wasn't Thanksgiving anymore. Today we were like reheating stuff. But I was we were doing it in shifts, so I was supposed to make like the stuffing and some other stuff today. And I was all ready to do it, but my grandma like was mean. I don't know why she gets in like a bad mood and this is on my mom's side. Mm-hmm. And so she like said like, oh my God, are you going to make more food or something? And it just made me, it just like hit a nerve. And I was like, well, you don't have to eat it. Right. Right. You can just eat your own food if you want. Like, you know what I mean? I like, I wasn't making it for her specifically. There's, 
for other no, people. No, it's just it was just kind of a crappy thing to say because it's yeah. just like, well, like why? Yeah, no one's forcing food down your your throat. You know, yeah, no it's, one's trying to make you eat it. Yeah. So yeah. I was like, well, you don't have to eat it. Yeah. yeah, it was mean. So that made me upset, and then. I said I wasn't making it anymore. I got mad and said I wasn't making, I wasn't cooking anymore. And I, then I just didn't cook. My mom supported me and said I didn't have to cook. And I was like, all right, good. I'm going to because done, I just, yeah. it just, I think sometimes it makes me mad. And I understand, like now, I kind of see things through a different lens now that I'm older, and that the responsibility of making all the food is on me. Yeah. I get why women would get so like angry and frustrated during the holidays when I was a kid. Like you would see your mom getting mad and stuff and you're like, you now you realize like, okay, because a lot of people are really unappreciative of all the work that you're putting in to make all this food. Right. Um, and my family's yeah. traditional. So th- my, my grandmother, my mom and my aunt, they would all make the food. Although my uncle would make the bird. He would cook the turkey He's kind of like, at, you know, like like putting water on it and st- whatever the, you know. Yeah, basting, ba- basting it. it. Mean, yeah, yeah. Like basting the <laughs> yeah. turkey. Um, and uh, so and then afterwards, the men would just sit and watch football. Yeah, and drink And the beer. women had to do all the cleaning as well. So they would be cleaning God, up yeah. in the kitchen and preparing the dessert for the men and I'm, I'm like um you know it seemed normal to me at this time and so um, it never seemed normal to me it, it made me mad like ever since i was younger, i was always yeah. like why well because why i'm you know i'm the i'm the lucky gender you know what i mean like right. i'm the beneficiary of like all this this tradition it's like right what what do you what do young boys learn they learn to that women do the cooking and the cleaning and the men do the eating and the football watching. Drinking yeah. and the football yeah. watching. Right. Yeah. And the, I had the same thing happen with my grandma another year, which is I made all the food. My dad insisted she didn't want to have a Thanksgiving. This is my grandma on my mom's side again. She mm-hmm. want to have Thanksgiving because she says that it always ends badly or something. And my dad insisted that he wanted to do it. But I ended up having to make all the food. My dad made like one dish, but I made, I had to make everything else. And then we brought it and then she was like, oh, this is so nice. Thank you so much, Tad, like to my dad. <laughs> and I was like, ah, I was so mad. Yeah. And then <laughs> my dad did to his ever loving credit, at least say I didn't make anything. I, my daughter made everything. Right. But my grandma already knew that. So it was just like insult to injury at that point. I was like, uh, I think it just it sucks when you make all this food for people and they don't appreciate it. I think that's what like is hard for women to yeah. like you under feeling unappreciated for all the effort you put in because it's a lot of work to plan oh, everything, all the ingredients and do it the, all. There's there's a trend. I mean, I read articles about this in Korea. So Korea has a, a harvest festival called the Chusak holiday. And the women are so responsible for everything that they some some women actually faked like injuries like uh, you would wear like a cast on their arm or something oh, yeah. like, oh, I, I broke my arm. I can't, you know, attend. I can't do the, you know, the holiday because the holiday is like it's like worse than your job. It's like a, it's like mm-hmm. going from. Well, we say we have an expression in English, like out of the frying pan into the fire kind of that's the expression. So it's kind of like you get your time off from work to work harder, catering this, you know, to the needs of all the men in the family by cooking and cleaning and nonstop food preparation and cleaning and child care and all these things. Now, I think in recent years, though, it's starting to change, you know, like I think that men are starting to realize like okay if if women are going to work full-time jobs then it's only mm-hmm. fair to split the the cleaning and the cooking duties 50 50 you know what i mean like it's just right. it's it that's the lesson that young kids should be learning is that like you have to cooperate together and you know prepare this this meal and so I don't know what it has happened in my family because my family is so spread out now. I think they have yeah. their new families, you know, so like all the cousins, they all have their family with my aunt and uncle together. 
and now my aunt and uncle are the grandma and grandpa and the same with my other family and my parents and my parents are the only ones that really get left out because both of their kids my brother and i live you know thousands of miles away so oh, yeah so that so they we never celebrate thanksgiving together and so it's it's one of those things where my you know when it comes to like the drama of the family i like i if if we had like a traditional thanksgiving where it was like all my my aunts and uncles together now after donald trump has been elected it would be on a, a ba- like a knockdown drag out battle of like, like we'd have to people. we'd have to set ground rules to like no we will not discuss politics because right. because they're they won't even talk to me right now like they 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 haven't talked to me in like years like if i but if i send them left, like like a I mean. if i send like a message to them like hey happy birthday radio mm-hmm. silence just nothing you know yeah so, I mean, honestly, you're better off without racist people in your life, though. I mean, to me, my opinion. But, you know, it is what it is. But uh, yeah. I get it. Yeah, I think that a lot of the modern times are the holidays just don't hit the way they used to. Like, it right. just hit different now. Like, they're not. I feel like holidays used to be such a thing. And now it just feels really watered down. And I can't tell if it's because I'm getting older or if times are just changing i feel like it's both probably I think times are changing i think people are like realizing like okay i've got i work hard and i've got this 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 week off or these three days off mm-hmm. and like do i want to be miserable with my family or happy yeah, with my out. friends and i think right. young people like millennials and and uh gen, gen z. z people are like you know what i'm already I'm already getting screwed over in the economy. Like I'm not making enough money. Um, you know, now I got to fly home to, right. to deal with this nonsense, you know? So um, to listen to my uncle, you know, talk about how great Donald Trump is, you know, to, right. you know, Don't I mean, why would I go home to that? Like I with you know, so I think, I think young people are, are, are creating their own holiday traditions within their friend group, friend groups. And yeah, I'm now thinking myself after having done the holiday spread three years in a row and never having been appreciated for it once. Not mm-hmm. once did anyone ever say, "Wow, thank you, you did such a good job." In fact, it's four years because it was I did it when I was twenty four, twenty five, twenty six, and now twenty seven. So it's technically four different Thanksgivings that I did completely by myself, right. and never ever anyone ever seemed appreciative at all. At that point, I'm like, next time I'm just saving my grocery money and my time and going on a trip somewhere <laughs> yeah. to bother with it. Yeah. That's how I go on a cruise or something or yeah, go to, get you know, yeah. A nice, yeah, I don't even get an Airbnb in like the next town over and just drink wine. <laughs> bed all day or something. Not really, but it's just, it's so kind of demoralizing. I get why people don't want to deal with, deal with it anymore yeah. in a way no i'm i i agree 100 percent. i think um it's good you know yeah uh maybe cr- like it's too much it's it's too much family it's it's too much you know thanksgiving and then christmas is right around the corner i think yeah. for for young people in their 20s one of the one is okay like just do a christmas yeah. and forego yeah, the thanksgiving think- or do the thanksgiving yeah. and skip the christmas i don't know but I think it's yeah. okay. Yeah. Yeah. I did Thanksgiving this year with my mom's family and I am doing Christmas with my dad's family because my grandpa passed away. So I want to see my grandma. Right. Um, but next year I'm saving my money both times and just going on a vacation some other <laughs> random time. It's just like, I don't want to be, I just don't want to be here and deal with comments and have to make all the food and just at the end of the day no one is happy it's like i wasn't happy i put in all this effort no one appreciated it and apparently they're not happy that i did all of that so i'd rather just save my money and go on a on a cruise or a trip or something you know at the yeah, end yeah yeah well i mean i think that's 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 fair you know like it's if it's not fun it's not happy 
why are we, we're just doing it. Uh, we're just going through the motions of it for no reason. You know, it's just like, because, because we have to, I think that's what people realize. I think that's what young people in America realized is like, Oh wait, I don't have to do this. Like nothing right. is going to happen. <laughs> you I know, don't. like nothing bad is going to happen. I'm not going to get struck by lightning if I don't go home for Thanksgiving, but we're so conditioned as children to like, follow these these traditions and you know it's they're they're just traditions like you you can break them that's fine like there's no nothing bad will happen you know it's your family they still have to love you you know right exactly yeah so yeah i don't know i think for all the young people out there if you're not feeling it this holiday spirit you know don't and don't feel like you're selfish because of it i think that we get so little time to relax and actually have vacation and stuff nowadays. It's like, you got to take every chance that you can get. Yeah. Yeah. I I agree with that. Yeah. All right. Well, if you have a holiday similar to Thanksgiving, a harvest festival in your culture, share all about it with us. If you also celebrate Thanksgiving, let us know how it's going for you. Do you agree that women usually have to do most of the work? I definitely agree with that. And do you think, are you down with that? Are you happy about that? Or do you actually want to stop following the tradition and go on vacation next year or go treat yourself next year? Right. Um, yeah. And let us know whose house you'd rather eat at, mine or Jack's. I think mine is the right one. <laughs> if you want to get on my good side, say my, my house. Right. <laughs> yeah. And uh, leave a comment down below and we will see you guys the next time. Uh, make sure to follow our podcast, Jack and Chill Podcast. Do he, Jack, right. what is our email on our website? Um, so our website is a to z English podcast.com. So we're still uh-huh. using the a to z English okay. podcast.com website. But uh-huh. um, you can send us an email, you know, a to z English podcast at gmail.com or mm-hmm. uh, the Jack and Chill podcast at gmail.com. Both of those are okay. Yeah. And we'll see you guys next time. Bye bye. Bye bye.